Hello friends. Today's topic is taxability or exemption of special allowances under clause 14 of section 10. In this topic, we will be discussing what is the amount of exemption is available to the employee wherein special allowances are paid to him and the provisions are covered under clause 14 of section 10. Now friends, let's start with section 10, 14 or rather clause 14 of section 10 which mentions the flexibility or exemption of special allowances received by the employee. These special allowances are provided to the employee cut start. These special allowances are provided to the employee either to meet expenses while he is on official tour or it may be personal in nature as well. There are two parts to clause 14 of section 10. First part mentions that the special allowance which is received by the employee will be entirely exempt. However, the condition is that it should be expended. The allowances received from the employer should be expended for the purpose for which the same is given. And the second part is the special allowances that is received by the employee will be taxable subject to the limit prescribed by the rule. If it exceeds the limit prescribed, the same will be taxable in the hands of the employee. And for the second category, it doesn't matter whether any expenses are incurred by the employee or not. However, as soon as it exceeds the limit prescribed, it will be taxable in the hands of the employee. You will get a standard deduction of the limits prescribed and amount over and above the limits prescribed will be subject to tax in the hands of the employee. So as far as the allowances is concerned, we have studied that there are categories which are fully taxable. There are categories which are partly taxable and there are categories which are fully exempt. So in this topic, we will be discussing exemption. In this cut start, so in this topic, we will be discussing allowances which are partly exempt or partly taxable and allowances which are fully exempt. First part on your screen, section 1014 special allowances to meet expenses relating to duties or personal expenses. This clause provides for exemption as per Rule 2BB in respect of the following. So, the prescribed rules are mentioned under Rule 2BB special allowances or benefit not being in the nature of perquisite benefit should not be in the nature of perquisite specifically granted allowances specifically granted to meet expenses incurred only necessarily and exclusively in the performance of duties of office expenses incurred only necessarily exclusively in the performance of the duties of an office or employment of profit cut start or employment of profit as per section 10 14 1 for the allowances under this category there is no limit on the amount which the employee can receive from the employer there is no limit on the amount which the employee can receive from the employer but whatever amount is received should be fully utilized for the purpose for which it was given to him. So as we have discussed earlier, there will be no limit on the allowances that a person that an employee will receive. 
However, the exemption will be available only if the amount is expended by the employee for the purpose for which it has been granted. Now the second category which is 10-14-2. Special allowance is granted to the SSC either to meet his personal expenses at the place where the duties of his office or employment of profit are ordinarily performed by him or at the place where he ordinarily resides or to compensate him for the increased cost of living so any allowances again allowances granted to the SSC to meet his personal expenses at the place where the duties of his office are ordinarily performed or at the place where he resides or to compensate him for increased cost of living that will fall under section 10.14.2 for this category of allowances there is a limit on the amount which the employee can receive from the employer there is a limit on the amount which the employee can receive from the employer any amount received by the employee in excess of the specified limits will be taxable in the hands as income from salary so anything in excess of the limit will be subject to tax in the hands of the employee it doesn't matter whether the amount which is received is actually spent or not by the employee for the purpose for which it was given to him so there is there will be no tab on whether there is any expenditure incurred by him or not by the employee or not under section 10.14.2 only if it is exceeding the limits prescribed then the same will be taxable in the hands of the employee and again there will be no tab on the expenditure whether any expenditure is actually incurred by the employee or not so we have discussed 10.14.1 and 10.14.2 now we will discuss the examples of allowances which are mentioned under the provisions first we will consider 10.14.1 which are prescribed under rule 2BB allowances prescribed for the purpose of section 10.14.1 which are mentioned in rule 2BB1 first any allowance granted to meet the cost of living cost of travel on tour cut start cost of travel on tour or on transfer any allowance for travel and cut start any allowance for traveling maybe on tour maybe on transfer that is the traveling allowance will be exempt entirely provided again the basic requirement is the expenses should be incurred it should be shown that the expenditure are indeed incurred Accordingly, any amount of allowance will be exempt in the hands of employee. Explanation Allowance granted to meet the cost of travel on transfer. So, there are two parts over here tour or transfer. So, traveling cost is covered under traveling allowance. Traveling could be for tour. Tour is nothing but it may be an official tour and it is relatively shorter than transfer official tour it's like you are visiting outside india for the purpose of business which could be for one week or two week and it includes business visit and transfer in a way could be a secondment arrangement wherein you are transferred to an entity to a sister entity outside India and it may extend to one or two years 
so transfer is for a long term purpose and tour is relatively shorter as compared to transfer so cost of travel on tour cost of travel on transfer these are two aspects in traveling allowance so under the explanation it has been mentioned regarding the cost of travel on transfer allowance is granted to meet the cost of travel on transfer includes any sum paid in connection with the transfer packing and transportation of personal effects of such transfer so as we have discussed that transfer is nothing but a relatively longer period for one or two years so if an employee for example is going on secondment outside india to a sister entity there will be expenses there are bound to be expenses for packing and transportation in which his personal effects the things which he requires personally will be required to be packed and transported to the country outside india so expenses related to it will be exempt under section 1014-1 so if you are going on transfer outside india any related expenses there too are also covered under the explanation as per the explanation wherein cost of travel on transfer includes any sum paid in connection with the transfer packing and transportation of personal effects on such transfer fair enough second allowance any allowance whether granted on tour or for the period of journey in connection with transfer so whether on tour or whether on transfer to meet the ordinary daily charges to meet the ordinary daily charges incurred by the employee on account of absence from his normal place of duty header can be termed as daily allowance or per diem allowance so in a example a person is seconded outside india to a sister entity now as far as daily expenses are incurred for daily visiting from his accommodation to the office outside india he will have to travel so there will be traveling expenditure secondly the accommodation in which he is living it it could be cut start it could be hotel accommodation or residential accommodation so since it is for a long term period it will be a housing accommodation residential accommodation and if he is on a tour then he will reside in a hotel accommodation so whether on tour whether on transfer is bound to incur expenses on the accommodation is bound to incur expenses on traveling is bound to incur expenses for daily consumption that is lunch dinner so this are sort of expenses which is bound to incur on daily basis as per section 1014-1 clause 2 of rule 2bb these expenses are covered under clause 2 under this clause as daily allowance or per diem allowance and it will be exp cut start and it will be exempt to the extent of cut start it will be exempt to the extent of the daily expenses incurred it will be exempt to the extent of amount expended by the employee again any allowance whether granted on tour or on transfer to meet the ordinary daily charges incurred by the employee on account of absence of normal place of duty so he is absent on from his normal place of duty in a way since he was working since he is working in india he is absent from this normal place of duty 
and he is seconded outside india or either he is on business visit outside india so he is absent from his normal place of duty in our example and accordingly he will be eligible for exemption of the daily allowance or per diem allowance received in this course third part any allowance granted to meet the expenditure incurred on conveyance in performance of duties of an office or employment of profit which is termed as conveyance allowance such allowance would be exempt only if free conveyance is not provided by the employer so if any conveyance allowance is provided by the employer which is related to expenditure incurred in the performance of duties of an office if yes then the conveyance allowance will be exempt in the hands of the employee any allowance granted to meet the expenditure incurred on a helper a such helper is engaged in the performance of duties of an office or employment of profit or less helper allowance in this clauses you can see that everything should be related to the performance of duties of an office or employment or profit here also in performance of duties of an office or employment of profit clause 1 Here there is no mention as such, but allowances, anything which is travel on tour or travel on transfer, is for the purpose of business only. Even here, tour and transfer is for cut start. Even here, tour and transfer are for the purpose of business. So this allowances. will be exempt provided they are incurred in the performance of duties of an office or employment of profit fourth was helper allowance fifth is research allowance any allowance granted for encouraging the academic research and training pursuits in educational and research institutions sixth any allowance granted to meet the expenditure on the purchase or maintenance of uniform for wear during the performance of the duties of an office or employment of profit so uniform allowance to meet the expenditure on the purchase and maintenance of uniform any uniform allowance paid an expenditure incurred cut start an expenditure incurred thereon will be exempt as per section 1014.1 read with rule 2bb so overall we have discussed six clauses for section 1014.1 wherein there will be no limit on the allowances amount that will be received by the employee however it should be expended by the employee and it should be expended for the purpose of employment or in the performance of duties of official duties first traveling allowance second daily allowance or per diem allowance third conveyance allowance fourth helper allowance research allowance and last one was uniform allowance now 1042 which are mentioned under rule 2 bb clause 2 in this part to reiterate cut start in this part to just quickly recap in this the expenditure incurred won't matter and the limit if the allowance paid 
by the employer is within the limit prescribed as per rule 2BB then nothing will be taxable if it is exceeding the limit then he will get a deduction up to the limit and amount exceeding the limit will be taxable first is special compensatory hilly area allowance in this there are series of allowances contained in the tabular form in which practically if you see it won't be of much relevance apart from two or three allowances but theoretically you should be aware of these provisions accordingly they have been mentioned in tabular form and we will quickly go through it once first is special allowance hilly area allowance which is high altitude allowance uncongenial climate allowance snowbound area allowance avalanche allowance so in case of extreme circumstances you can say hilly area allowance amount exempt from tax varies from rupees 300 per month to rupees 7000 per month so the range is between 300 to 7000 per month for various allowances and specifically 7000 per month in Sachin area of Jammu and Kashmir second border area allowance remote area allowance remote locality allowance difficult area allowance disturbed area allowance for that the amount exempt from tax varies from 200 per month to 1300 per month so here also there will be a range mentioned under rule 2 bb for this various type of allowances so if you see in the first category i mean we have consolidated all the allowance or the types of allowance which are similar in nature over here first was hilly area allowance which will stand in the range of anything between 300 per month to 7000 per month and border area allowance difficult area allowance or disturbed area allowance the exemption would be in the range of anything between 200 per month to 1300 per month as per rule 2 bb tribal areas or schedule areas is 200 per month 200 per month includes agency area allowance and it is limited to specific states Madhya Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, Uttar Pradesh, Karnataka, Tripura, Assam, West Bengal, Bihar and Orissa so these are the states mentioned under rule 2BB wherein 200 per month will be the allowance which will be exempt anything in excess of 200 for example 1000 per month then only 800 per month will be taxable next is compensatory cut start next is compensatory field area allowance specified areas in specified states 2600 per month is the exemption amount and there is a note mentioned wherein if this exemption is taken it is the compensatory field area allowance employee cannot claim any exemption in respect of border area allowance so either you take border area allowance which is mentioned over here in the range of 200 to 1300 per month or either you take compensatory field area allowance it both cannot cut start both cannot be taken simultaneously next is compensatory modified area allowance study cut start specified areas in specified states if this exemption is taken employee cannot claim any expense cut start employee cannot claim any exemption in respect of border area allowance and the limit is 1000 
per month. Counter insurgency allowance granted to members of armed forces operating in areas away from the permanent cut start away from the permanent locations 3900 and restriction of border area allowance underground allowance is granted to employees working in uncongenial unnatural climate in underground mines 800 per month up to 800 per month is the limit high altitude allowance is granted to armed forces operating in high altitude areas up to 1060 per month for a range of altitude and up to 600 per month for altitude above 15,000 feet highly active field area allowance granted to members of armed forces 4200 per month Island duty allowance granted to members of armed forces in Andaman, Kat Sat, in Andaman and Nicobar and Lakshadweep group of islands, up to 3,250 per month. Now the next set of allowances will you may encounter frequently and practically also his cut start and practically also it has relevance children education allowance up to 100 per month per child up to a maximum of two children is exempt so the limit of 100 per month is per child and only two children are allowed for the purpose of exemption hostel expenditure the limit is 300 per month per child and maximum up to two children transport allowance granted to an employee to meet expenditure for the purpose of commuting between place of residence and place of duty this is applicable only to only up to 3200 per month granted to an employee who is blind or deaf and dumb or orthopedically handicapped with the disability of lower extremities so if the employee is blind or deaf and dumb or handicapped then the allowance and the exemption which is allowed is 3200 per month and the same will be allowed for the purpose of transport between place of residence and place of duty. Transport allowance to an employee working in any transport business to meet his personal expenditure during his duty performed in the course of running of such transport from one place to another place provided employee is not in receipt of daily allowance so for example a truck driver cut start for example a truck driver he wants to travel from delhi to mumbai so this will be a long journey where he needs to transport the goods of the employer from delhi to mumbai so it may take two to three days for him to travel so any personal expenditure incurred by him while on travel from delhi to mumbai can be termed as can be termed into transport allowance and accordingly the amount of exemption for such expenditure incurred amount of exemption shall be lower of the following 70 percent of such allowance or 10,000 per month at start or 10,000 per month. So, again, as we have discussed earlier, this expenses under 10142, the actual expenditure doesn't matter. The 
employee will get a standard deduction of the amount mentioned under rule 2BB. So these are examples of allowance wherein the employee will get a standard deduction of the amount mentioned in the second column. So for transport allowance where an employee is traveling on one cut start where the employee is traveling from one place to another and he is working in any transport business the employer cut start the employer is into transport business so the employees working under such employer will be eligible for exemption of 70% of the amount of the allowance or 10,000 per month whichever is lower so from practicality point of view children education allowance of 100 hostel expenditure allowance of 300 per month per child maximum up to two children transport allowance from place of residence to place of duty paid to a employee who is blind deaf and dumb or handicapped employee and transport allowance paid to an employee who is working with a transport business employer employer is into transport business any exemption the exemption to the employee to such employee is 70 percent of the allowance or 10,000 per month whichever is lower from practicality and this allowance are relevant now friends the allowances which are fully exempt let's discuss this one by one allowance to high court judges the allowance paid to a judge of high court under section 22a2 of the high court judges condition of service act 1954 is not taxable and is exempt fully allowance paid by the united nation organization to its employees is not taxable by virtue of Section 2 of United Nations Privileges and Immunities Act 1947. Compensatory allowance under Section 222 of the Constitution received by a church under Article 222 of the Constitution. So this is article and not section. Article 222 of the Constitution is not taxable since it is neither salary nor perquisite. Peshambar Dayalav CIT versus CIT. So, compensatory allowance received under the article of the constitution is exempt from tax. Some tree allowance, which is nothing but personal expenditure allowance paid to the judges. Some tree allowance given to high court judges under section. Double to C of the High Court Judges Act 1954 and Supreme Court Judges under Section 23B of the Supreme Court Judges Act 1958 is not chargeable to tax. Allowances payable outside India, Section 1017, mentioned under Clause 7 of Section 10. Any allowances which is paid outside India to a citizen of India. By the government of India is exempt and if you will remember there were specific allowances which were deemed to accrue or arise in India as per section 9 wherein salary and allowances paid or rather allowances and perquisites paid to the Indian citizen to an Indian citizen by the government of India will be deemed to accrue or arise in India even if services are rendered outside India. To that effect, the allowances which are payable outside India to such citizen of India will be exempt under clause 7 of section 10. Allowances or perquisites paid or allowed as such outside India by the government of India to a citizen of India for services rendered outside India are exempt from tax under 10.7. In such cases, under section 
913, the income chargeable under the head salaries is deemed to accrue or arise in India. So, a citizen of India receiving any allowances or perquisite from government of India will be first included under the head salaries as deemed to accrue or arise in India even if services are rendered outside India. So first it will be included under the head salaries and then it will be exempted under clause 7 of section 10. Moving on to next exemption, exemption of specified allowances and perquisites paid to chairman or retired chairman or any other member or retired member of the UPSC. UPSC is nothing but United Public Service Commission, Union Public Service Commission. So there are four factors in it, four components to it. Chairman and member. Chairman may be retired or in service. Member may be retired or in service. There are different provisions there is different provision for retired personnel and there are different provision for the personnel who are in service. And here they are talking about the chairman and the member of the UPSC Union Public Service Commission. Perquisites and allowances received by an employee are taxable under the head salaries unless they are specifically exempted. So generally, perquisites and allowances are taxable in the hands of employee as income under the head salaries unless they are specifically exempted. Obviously, which are mentioned under section 1014. So 1045 exempts specified allowances and perquisite received by the chairman or any other member including retired chairman or member of the Union Public Service Commission who specified allowances and perquisites mentioned under clause 45 of section 10 are exempted and the same are paid to chairman whether retired or not member whether retired or not of the UPSC Union Public Service Commission the exemption would be available in respect of such allowances, such perquisite as may be notified by the central government in this behalf. So, cut, start. So, which exemption will be exempt is the exemption, the components which are notified by the central government in the official gazette. Central government has notified following allowances and perquisites for serving chairman and members of UPSC for the purpose of exemption. The following services, following allowances and perquisites are notified by the central government for the serving chairman and the serving members of UPSC. Value of rent free official residence would be exempt for the serving chairman and serving members value of conveyance facilities including transport allowance sumptuary allowance paid to the serving chairman and the serving members and value of leave travel concession all these four allowance will be exempt as per clause 45 of section 10 in the hands of serving chairman in the hands of serving member. What about in the case of retired chairman and retired members of UPSC? The following has been notified by the central government for the purpose of exemption under section 1045. First, a sum of maximum of 14,000 per month for defraying the service, for providing the service of an orderly and for meeting expenses incurred towards secretarial assistance on contract basis. So the sum over here mentioned for the prescribed services is 14,000 per month 
which will be exempt in the hands of retired chairman and retired member of UPSC. The value of a residential telephone free of cost and the number of free calls to the extent of 1500 cut start to the extent of 1500 per month over and above free calls per month allowed by the telephonic authorities telephone authorities the second exemption is related to the residential telephone free cut start second exemption is related to residential telephone which is provided free of cost and number of free calls therein note tax exemption is also available in cut start is also available in respect of certain specified perquisites enjoyed by chief election commissioner election commissioner and judges of supreme court on account of the enabling provisions in the respective acts which govern their service condition so this exemption mentioned under clause 45 section 10 is over and above the exemption which is eligible which is applicable to chief commissioner chief election commissioner election commissioner and judges of supreme court in their respective acts so the exemption cut start the exemption under section 1045 does not affect the exemption mentioned under respective act of certain person it is over and above those exemption illustration mr x has two sons cut start Mr. X has two sons. He is in receipt of children education allowance of 15, 150 per month for his elder son and 70 per month for his younger son. But both his two sons are going to school. Both his two sons are going to school. He also receives the following allowances transport allowance 1800 per month, travel allowance of 500 per month. We are expected to compute his taxable allowances so we will have to analyze the allowances cut start so friends we will have to analyze the allowances which are exempt or the taxable allowance amount in the hands of mr x in this case First allowance is children education allowance. The limit is limit of exemption as per rule 2BB. But start limit of exemption as per rule 2BB is 100 per month per child accordingly. Elderson 150 per month is paid 150 minus 100 is the amount taxable 50 amount will be taxable per month and younger son 100. amount paid is 70 this entire amount will be exempt in no case there shouldn't be case that you know cumulatively since there are two child the 200 per month limit will be applicable cut start the 200 per month limit will be applicable it's not the case the exemption is available per child and the elder son in this case is 150 accordingly 50 per month will be taxable it is not that you know the remaining amount in the younger son which is 70 so 30 per month is remaining it cannot be utilized against the elder son this is not the case so limit is to be seen per month per child so in this case 
older son 50 per month is the taxable amount and for younger son nothing is taxable for transport allowance start transport allowance will be exempt entirely as 1800 per month so transport allowance can be considered as nil over here assuming assuming that there are two type of transport allowance over here which we have studied first a person receiving the employee who receives the transport allowance is either blind, deaf or handicapped and the amount exempt in his case is 3200 per month and another set of transport allowance is to an employee who is working in transport business wherein 70% of such allowance or 10,000 per month whichever is lower is the amount of exemption. So in this case we can see there is no such info. So we can assume that Assignee, the employee is assuming that employee is eligible for the exemption for transport allowance as per rule. To BB in absence of information we can mention it over here from the start in absence of information we have assumed we have assumed that employee is eligible for exemption for transport allowance as per rule to BB there are two types of transport allowance you can mention this in the notes First is for blind, deaf or a handicapped person wherein 3200 per month is allowed or either the transport allowance exemption is applicable to a transport business, employer is into transport business in that case 70% or 10,000 per month whichever is lower is the exemption amount. So in that case you can assume that you know the person is either blind deaf or handicapped and the entire amount will be exempt in this case 1800 per month will be exempt so this is what we have assumed and in the examination you can always put a note saying that cut start saying that saying that the transport allowance is applicable to the employee and the employer is eligible for the transport allowance as per rule 2bb so nothing is taxable accordingly nil has been written tribal area allowance tribal area allowance is exempt up to 200 per month so 500 minus 200 is nothing but 300 per month will be taxable in the hands of mr x total taxable allowance is nothing but 50 per month for children education allowance and 300 per month so 350 per month is the taxable amount so this was the end of the solution wherein total taxable allowance in the hands of mr x for the assessment year 2021 is 350 per month Now the next illustration, Mr. Rags, an employee, was sent to US in connection with the project of the firm's client for two months in the previous year. In addition to his salary, the firm paid per diem allowance for the period when he worked in US to meet expenses on boarding and lodging. So in our example, we had discussed 
that a person going on transfer cost of travel cut start cost of travel on transfer where a person is seconded so in that case the daily charges the charges cut start the charges for traveling the charges for daily consumption the charges for residential accommodation or hotel accommodation those cases will be termed as daily allowance daily charges allowance or per diem allowances and that is covered under section 1014-1 of rule 2bb1 and the entire allowance will be exempt provided expenditure are incurred by the employee similarly in this case also mr a is sent to us and he is receiving per diem allowance tax was not deducted at source from such allowance by the employer mr a did not include such allowance in computation of his taxable salary for the relevant assessment year so neither employer deduct any taxes neither mr a has offered anything in his return of income in the course of assessment of mr a under section 143 see the assessing officer sent a notice to him asking him to explain why the per diem allowance received by him should not be charged to tax mr a has sought your advice so in this case you can see the per diem allowance is not offered to tax by the employee and in this regard a notice is issued by the assessing officer asking him why this amount should not be offered to tax and mr a has sought your advice in this regard so as per section 1014-1 read with rule 2bb a person is allowed an exemption of the amount of per diem allowance if such expenditure is indeed incurred by the employee the only thing is in this case the employee should have first offered the per diem allowance first mention the per diem allowance in the computation and thereafter an exemption as per section 10 should have come across so in this case there is nothing with cut start so in this case there is nothing which is wrong that the employer has done i mean they have rightly not deducted the taxes because it is not taxable at all the employer is right in his place but tds is not deducted employee is right mr a is right in his sense that nothing is taxable accordingly he also hasn't paid any taxes thereon because the same is exempt as per section 1014-1 read with rule 2bb the only thing on a precautionary basis or only thing which is right that should have been done by mr a was to mention that in the return of income as taxable salary as taxable allowances and thereafter an exemption should have been mentioned as section 1014 exemption of per diem allowance so to answer this question mr a is right in his sense and cut start mr a is right of what he has done wherein nothing will be taxable the per diem allowance will won't be taxable cut start the per diem allowance won't be taxable in his hands and he has rightly not offered to tax the per diem allowance the illustration related to the allowances which are exempt the 1014 illustration section 1014 we concludes this and this was the last portion but that this was the last illustration part in a series of allowances that we have seen are either exempt or taxable in the hands of a cut start in the hands of the employee under clause 14 
under section 10. So from starting, we have seen 10, 14, 1, read with rule 2 BB, wherein the expenses, wherein the allowances will be fully exempt under section 10, 14, 1, if the cut start, start, wherein the allowance will be entirely exempt if expenses are incurred by the employee under section 10 14 1 second category is allowances will be exempt to the extent of limits prescribed under rule 2 bb there is set of allowances mentioned which is traveling allowance under 10 14 1 traveling allowance daily allowance per diem allowance conveyance allowance helper research and uniform allowance and for 10 14 2 Practically, this allowance, which is border allowance, compensatory allowance, won't be relevant. But theoretically, you should know them. Underground allowance, high altitude allowance, island duty allowance, then children education allowance, hostel transport allowance are practically useful. Then there are set of allowances related to judges of high court, supreme court, wherein these allowances will be fully exempt if certain conditions are satisfied. And section 1045, wherein exemption is provided to the members or chairman, which may be either retired or in service, which are working with UPSC. The entire amount received will be taxable. The entire amount received will be exempt under section 1045. And then two illustrations. So this concludes the part of allowances which are exempt under clause 14 of section 10. Thank you.